Good morning. This is Daily Hebrew Declarations with Daniel Jedediah Cook, and I'm reading the declaration for today, February the 5th, 2021. The three Hebrew letters we're honoring today are Nun, He, and Shin. Along with those three living letters, we're also honoring the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the Lord, and the spirit of might. The declaration today reads this, the power of inheritance, nuclear potential that transitions faith to fulfillment. Here we are, fully present in body and mind, fully engaged with the awestruck of Yahweh that we house within. Now, I love the way that Michelle starts today's declaration, particularly as she talks about this place of the nuclear potential that transitions faith to fulfillment. And I really like to kind of go back and kind of launch off from where we were talking about yesterday. You know, when we were talking yesterday, we talked about this place of the understanding of, of Yahweh giving us all things that we need that, to pertain, that pertains to life and godliness. And, and it's something that I've been speaking about for quite some time now. But when we look at this in the place of, of really what Yahweh has asked, been asking me to do is that I thought I understood the process. I thought that I understood, okay, Yahweh, you've given me all that I all that I have, but yet when I look at my own actions, sometimes I my own actions kind of, if you will, judge myself, not in the negative sense of judgment, but it judges myself because I'm like, now wait a minute, do I am I really acting like Yahweh has already given me all things that pertain to life and godliness? Do my thought processes do the way that I understand something engage this place of doing that? Or is my mind still set in this idea of, of, of the, the bondage that uh, slavery has brought, the bondage of Babylonian slavery has brought? Because believe it or not, we have been, you know, religion and, and, and Babylon has taken a lot of things and, and told us that this is the way that they have to be. Well, I was, spo- I was speaking to a, a friend of mine the other day, and, and I realized the way that Yahweh was taking me through this process. Because the way he had me do this, and I mentioned this yesterday, but the way he had me do this, it was he had me sit in the middle of the treasury rooms. He had taken me to the treasury rooms quite some time ago. And when he took me there, I thought they were the treasury rooms of heaven for all of us. And then Yahweh said, no, this is only a, this is, this is your portion. This is the portion that I've given you. But, but Yahweh, this is so immense, uh, so massive and so immense. How could this all be, you know, what you have set aside for me? Because I can't even see the ends of it. It's so much. It's so exceedingly abundantly. And then, of course, it, when I said that, it, it hit me. Well, how much more so when each one of us come together with the treasury rooms that Yahweh has given us individually, when we join together, when we become echad, when we are echad, when we act as the one, the one new man coming together as one and operating as one, all of that treasure becomes shared. And that truly is the exceedingly abundantly. Because I'm not just limited to what Yahweh has just given me. It's now what Yahweh has given us. You see, it's a whole new way of looking at things when we begin to see it from that perspective. But what Yahweh had me do is to sit into the middle of the the treasury room and to sit as a flame. And as I was as as I burned as a flame in the center of this, of course, the light that that the fire of Yahweh inside of me was, was beginning to show, allowed me to see a greater depth and a greater revelation of the, of the treasures that were around me. Now, remember, this treasure can be in a financial perspective. This treasure can be in revelation. This treasure can be in understanding. This treasure can be in, in physical, uh, physical healing. This, 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 this treasure can be anything. It is really, truly the nuclear potential of of what Yahweh has already spoken to us because the you know you think about it when you talk about a nuclear bomb and and I hope I hate to to use it in that perspective but think about the nuclear fission and the and the process of that the power is there already it's just a matter of changing or manipulating that that it releases the power of the true nuclear uh, potential that is within and the same thing is true with us 
There is, a, there is a potential of a nuclear power inside of us. And that's the power of Almighty Yahweh being fully present in mind and body and fully engaged in Him that sparks this, this explosion of Yahweh's glory here in the earth. But as He was sitting me, having me sit there in the middle of the, of the treasury room, I began to, He began to speak to me about this way of looking at things. And the way he was telling me was, you know, as you're looking at these things, act as if they, uh, that everything that I ask you to do has already been prepared for you. And so I want you to take some time just to sit and meditate and think about things that, that I've, I've asked you to do so far or things that may come up and how you would react and respond in your mind based on those things started to hit me what Yahweh was trying to take me through. You see, you know, I'm, I, I, I know I'm kind of touching on something here that, that some of you may, may say, now hold on a minute, but hold on a minute with me. Let me, let me explain what I'm, what I'm talking about here. You see, we talk about subconscious, and when we talk about subconscious, we, we, a lot of times, to me, subconscious is given as an excuse that, get, that, that, that basically says, well, that's just the way I've always done things, or that was my subconscious that was having me do something. And suddenly my, not, my subconscious becomes this extra part of me, this separated part of me that, uh, that I can use then to blame or to accuse of something that, that, that I've chosen to do, or something that where my mind has been set already and it has learned a particular path. Follow through with me on this. When Yahweh spoke to me quite some time ago about three different three different words: archetype, paradigm, and intention. And as I began to meditate on the paradigm perspective of that, I realized that paradigm and intention were not the same thing. For me, I, I, I kept confusing the two of them and thinking they were synonymous, but they're not. But the paradigm part of that really began to speak to me when Yahweh began to give me the definition of a pattern of thought, the way that I think about something. So when he had me sitting in the middle of this treasury room and I began to look around and to see these things, I began to work out in my head, how would I act if I knew that all I had to do was ask permission and withdraw from the treasuries of heaven to be able to accomplish? What would my attitude be? How would I respond? You see, I began to realize that what I was taking was those old thoughts of slavery, those old, those old uh, slavery type of mentalities and slavery patterns that I'd always had before. And now Yahweh is having me to look at them yet again from the perspective of knowing that I've already got everything that I need and, and trying to change those patterns of thought. You see, to me, that's where, the, that's where our quote-unquote subconscious comes into play. And it's not really subconscious, it's just the way that we've always done things. It's the pattern of thought that makes it easy for our mind to accomplish a goal. But wait a minute, does not the scripture say, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind? You see what I'm saying now? Yahweh's taken me. It's like the first time that he took me into the secret place. He had me come back there every day over a two to three week period. And I would go back in and, and he, had, he had shown me these sapphire stones inside of the secret place. And I would go back every day and pick these up, put them in my shirt, and then go and build something that Yahweh had instructed me to build. And I laid out these sapphire stones in the pattern that he showed me to lay them out in. And it, was, and it was from there that I began to have a pattern of being in that secret place. So when, when Yahweh took me in and began to show me the secret place, show me this place of, of this, this beautiful field and this grass and the mountain and all the components that were inside of this place where it was just him and I, then, and I, and I said, Yahweh, I never, ever want to leave here. He looked at me and said, you don't have to because this place is inside of you. I knew I knew because I had spent the last three weeks changing the patterns of my thoughts, changing the patterns of my mind to know that I could remain in this place with him all the time. He who sits, he who dwells is what the King James says, but 
If you go back to the Hebrew, it says, he who sits, one who is seated as a king, he who sits in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is the nuclear potential that transitions faith to fulfillment.